alaikum dear students uh, welcome to nuclear physics lectures i'm dr Purvez ahmed uh, in this particular lectures uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, the binary energy uh, curve so just like you can see it here in this particular figure uh, the binding uh, we have the binding energy curve uh, in which the the binding energy for nucleons or the binding energy uh, is being plotted uh, versus the mass number or the number of the uh, nucleons and a particular nucleus. So here can, you can see, uh, you can observe it for uh, different elements. So you can see it here from starting from deuterium, then helium-3, then tritium, and you can see it here that uh, initially it's been uh, had affected. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's increasing rapidly. While, uh, 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 increasing rapidly uh, from uh, deuteriums to uh, helium-3 and tritiums and then uh, again for uh, I mean helium-4 it has uh, a value that is uh, uh, around uh, 7 uh, mega electrons worth and then we have uh, abrupt uh, decrease uh, up to lithium-6 uh, and then uh, I mean again we get uh, the increase with the increasing number of the nucleons uh, uh, until uh, uh, we get lithium-7 and then uh, I mean uh, we have uh, uh, again some sharp, uh, sharp increase in the uh, binding energy uh, until uh, we reach the nitrogens and then oxygens uh, I mean uh, you can see it here you can observe for yourselves uh, that it's been increasing with the increasing uh, number of the nucleus until we reach to uh, uh, the irons, so iron is the, the most uh, stable uh, nucleus. So how we get, can discuss uh, more formally uh, this binding energy curve? Uh, uh, so let's start with more formal discussions uh, about the binding energy curve. So uh, the binding energy curve, uh, just like uh, we mentioned, uh, uh, the binding energy curve is obtained by dividing the total binding energy or uh, the total binding energy for the nucleons by the number of the nucleons or uh, we can say that uh, by uh, the number of uh, by the by the atomic uh, numbers i mean uh, you can get the curve uh, i mean uh, the similar curve uh, you can get for the binding energy for nucleons versus uh, uh, the number of nucleons or uh, you can get the binding number the binding energy for nucleons by uh, the mass number. So uh, the fact that there is a peak in the binding energy curve in the region of stability uh, near irons means that either uh, the breakup of heavier nuclei uh, that we call fissions or the combination of lighter nuclei that we call fusions uh, will yield nuclei which are more tightly bound, that is less mass uh, for nucleons. And this fact uh, that is being shown uh, on the, the figures uh, that like you can observe here. I mean this is uh, I mean this is the fact uh, that we have just mentioned uh, for the iron that is uh, uh, from the irons before the iron we have the possibility for the fissions and after that we have the possibility for the uh, uh, fissions of the uh, nuclei I mean this is the region of particular importance uh, around the uh, the iron uh, about the iron so that's why uh, it's been mentioned here uh, uh, that uh, there is a peak and a binary energy curve in the region of stability near irons so uh, it's mean that either uh, either breakup of heavier nuclei that we call fissions or the combination of lighter nuclei that we call fusion will yield nuclei which are more tightly bound uh, that is uh, less mass for uh, nucleons. The binding energies of the nucleons are in the range of millions of electron volts. Uh, compared to tens of uh, electron volts for the atomic uh, electrons. So this is the fact we already mentioned uh, in the previous lectures. Uh, that is the binding energy of the nucleus. I mean, it's more energy are being required to separate uh, uh, the nucleus inside the nucleus because, uh, because they have to compete with the 
a strong nuclear force. Uh, you know that uh, the, among the nucleons inside the nucleus, there is a strong nuclear force. So in order, to, in order to overcome the strength of that strong nuclear force, more energy is being required. So that's why we are saying here that uh, the range of the energy that's been required is and millions of electron volt uh, as compared to tens of electron volts for the uh, atomic electrons. So uh, when an atomic transitions uh, uh, emit a photons in the range of few electron volts and the visible light regions, so nuclear transitions can emit gamma rays in the uh, mega electron volt range. I mean this is I mean again one of the key difference uh, I mean with the atomic transitions and nuclear transitions. I mean nuclear transitions uh, I mean when occurs so it's a matter of photons uh, with a few electron volts of energy and that mostly lie in the visible light regions. But when we have whenever we have nuclear transitions so nuclear transitions uh, it's mostly uh, you know that uh, it emit gamma rays uh, uh, and uh, it's lie in the energy energy range of uh, mega electron volt. So uh, there are several Latin facts in the curl. Uh, I mean, if you have a close look, if you have a close look on the curl, so you will find that there are several Latin facts uh, in that curl. So what are they? I mean, it's, uh, if you have observed it clearly, just like we mentioned, uh, so initially we have sharp rise uh, with uh, atomic number or with number of nucleons to a broad maximum of about 8.6 mega electron volt for nucleons uh, near the mass number uh, 60. I mean, this fact we have uh, already observed, uh, and you can uh, have a look on it again. So, uh, then uh, we have a gradual decrease to about 7.6 mega electron volts for nucleons for the heaviest nucleus uranium i mean uranium that occur at the right most of the curl i mean initially we have this much of increase a broad maxima of about 8.6 mega electron volts for nucleons near the mass number 60 i mean 60 where we have the cobalt and then we have gradual decrease and we finally reach to 7.6 mega electron volt for nucleons for the heaviest nucleus uh, uh, that we call uh, that is well known as uh, uranium so uh, several sharp peaks i mean that you can also uh, uh, see or observe there uh, in the uh, light nuclear regions uh, corresponding to the nuclei uh, and those nuclei are heliums, uh, bariums, uh, carbon-12, um, nallium, and uh, uh, magnesium. I mean, these are the uh, uh, the lighter nuclei. And for these lighter nuclei, we have uh, several sharp peaks uh, in a region. Uh, and there, those uh, are the, the, those uh, several sharp peaks are found in the lighter and the light nuclear regions corresponding to uh, these uh, nuclei. Uh, less prominent peaks, uh, along with that, we have less prominent peaks, and those uh, less uh, prominent peaks, they are being seen for the uh, atomic number, uh, that is, uh, for, sorry, for the mass number 20, 28, 50, 82, and 126. And uh, these number, uh, these number, they are called uh, the magic number. Uh, the, ma the concept of the magic number, uh, we will discuss in the uh, coming lectures. So uh, here, an uh, example. Uh, I mean, if uh, one is being uh, familiar, I mean, we discuss about the mass effect. We discuss about the binding energy. We discuss about the binding energy for nuclei. We discuss about uh, the binding fractions. Uh, we discuss uh, about the binding fractions. So by utilizing this concept, uh, I mean, uh, you will be able to do the calculations for binding energy uh, for the nuclei. And this, for example, uh, we have calculated, uh, I mean, the binding energy and the binding fractions for uh, deuteriums. I mean, we have calculated for deuteriums, then we have calculated for the uh, helium or for the alpha particle, helium nucleus or alpha particles. 
and uh, at the end we have calculated it for uh, the oxygen so uh, just like that you can calculate it for a more nuclei and again uh, you can uh, have a look again at the curl so just like the fact we have mentions I mean it's all these they, they are being notified here I mean here this particular uh, region we have abrupt uh, increase and and after that uh, we get we, we have a steady increase until uh, irons so here around 60 just like we mentioned around 60 we have the maximum increase and then uh, we we have a gradual decrease until we reach uh, a final destination for the having a nucleus uh, uranium 235 so uh, here I mean uh, again if you have a look here uh, at this particular uh, figure so here you can see it uh, you can observe that uh, helium nucleus that we also call the alpha particles has a particularly stable structures and the other nuclei are multiple of alpha particles I mean uh, helium particles uh, here we saying that uh, you can observe in that particular uh, diagram that it has a particular stable structures and so helium the most like uh, most likely lying here so uh, helium, uh, we are saying that uh, the helium nucleus or the alpha particle has particularly stable structures and the other nuclei, they are mostly lie as a multiple of the alpha uh, particles. So uh, the fact that a peak and the binding energy curve in the region of stability uh, near irons uh, means that either the breakup of heavier nuclei that we call fissions or the combinations are uh, of lighter nuclei that we call fusions of a real nuclei which are more tightly bound that is a less mass uh, for a nuclei so that should be remembered and it's a fact uh, this most interesting fact uh, about this particular curve which we should remember so uh, we have to look upon uh, the iron limit what's the iron limit and what's that concept being utilized for so in iron limits uh, you know that uh, the buildup of heavier elements and the nuclear fusions uh, process uh, and star is limited to the elements uh, below iron. I mean, this is the well known fact, and this is the limits, uh, limits and what limits and uh, nuclear fusion process. So, let me repeat it again the buildup of heavier elements and the nuclear fusion process and star is limited to the elements uh, below irons. So why this? Uh, because uh, the fusion of irons would subtract energy rather than uh, provide it. I mean, so we know about fusions, and whenever fusion occur, so it's a mad energy. But why we're saying that? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the fusion of irons uh, uh, is not possible. Uh, uh, we cannot do the fusions of iron. So it's because uh, if you do the fusion of iron, so uh, that fusions of iron would subtract energy rather than provide it. I mean, we have to provide a huge amount of energy. We have to uh, give it energy, more and more energy. So unlike that, uh, I mean, we are most interested to gain energy from the fusion. So that's why, uh, I mean, it's, uh, fusions from the irons, uh, I mean, it's, uh, the people, they are not really interested in that. So uh, iron, iron 56 is abundant in uh, stellar frosts and with the binding energy for nucleons of 8.8 8, uh, mega electron volt and be remember this is the third most tightly bound of the uh, nuclei uh, and uh, it's also a fact that uh, nickel 62 uh, is I isotope being the most strongly bound in nucleus and that's been followed by uh, the iron uh, 58 so that's all uh, we have uh, for this lecture, uh, see you in more lectures. Till then.